Hi there, welcome to Nappy Invest. Time for another Financial Year 23 result video. How about in saying that, the company that I will be featuring in today's video, eCargo, did not release their Financial Year 23 results. They actually released the half year results. Now, that very fact won't deter me from doing a video on this company simply because when I did see this as a requested company, I did get a little bit excited because I have not had a look at this company over the past nine years since it listed on the ASX back in November 2014. And I'm always a little bit excited to do a little bit of research on a company I have not looked at in the past. Now, just looking at the name eCargo and the very fact that the E in the name is lowercase uh, sort of implied that this company had something to do with e-commerce. And then I had a look at their logo. And when you have a look at their logo, eCargo, your e-commerce partner, that verified this company has something to do with the e-commerce, but you have to delve a little bit deeper. And that's exactly what I do. So what or who is eCargo? Now, eCargo is a supply chain company helping brands expand and sell more in the Asia market, particularly in China. In fact, this company reports in Hong Kong dollars. eCargo's one-stop solution covers logistics and fulfillment, e-commerce management and operations, online to offline distribution and wholesale. Uh, eCargo comprises of three 100% owned subsidiaries, eCargo or ECG, Metcash Asia. Yes, that has something to do with Metcash and Jessica's Suitcase. I couldn't find any information on Jessica's Suitcase, but eCargo or ECG is eCargo's group's China-focused entity offering enabling services and trading for brands wanting to enter China. ECG focuses on formulating executing and managing business and sales plan for our partners. We we'll won't talk about Metcash Asia, but that is the Asian arm of Australia's leading wholesale and distributor. Now, in saying all this, the company is transitioning its focus from B2C, which is business to consumer e-commerce, to B2B, which is business to business e-commerce, to focus on a longer value chain and capitalize on the lucrative potential within the business to business ecosystem. The next five companies I plan on doing in this series include two companies I own, Nanasonics and Johns Ling. Also do videos on Red5, ARB Corporation, and Polynovo. So look out for those videos within the next few weeks. Now let's have a look at the financial results, the half-year financial results for eCargo. Again, this is in Hong Kong dollars. And to um, convert from Hong Kong dollars to Australian dollars, you divide by five because one Hong Kong dollar equals 20 cents Australian. So revenue $67.5 million, which is roughly 13 million Australian dollars. That was up 44%. So that's a good sign that this company is increasing their revenue. Company's also profitable. So we're starting off on the right foot when it comes to e-cargo, increasing revenue, increasing profit and profitability, $2.2 million of profit, up 64% from last year. Now we're on to some red flags, some negatives. Gross margins, 31% down from 39% last year. And I would like to see gross margins remaining at least uh, constant, not decreasing. I uh, prefer to see gross margins rising through time. So that's the first red flag when it comes to eCargo. Second red flag is operating cash flow and free cash flow. This company was negative in the first half of this financial year. Negative 20.4 million uh, operating cash flow, negative 20.2 million free cash flow. Uh, when you convert that to Australian dollars, that's roughly operating cash flow and free cash flow negative by about 4 million Australian dollars. Now this is one half and there is probably is some seasonality when it comes to e-cargo. And I would assume the first half of the calendar year is probably the worst half. And it wouldn't be surprising to see this company becoming free cash flow and operating cash flow positive, slightly positive in the second half of the financial year. The third red flag, and this is a significant red flag in my opinion, is debt. This company has net debt of 46.8 million Hong Kong dollars. And if you convert that to Australian dollars, that's between nine and $10 million dollars of debt. And I prefer companies of this size to be or to have net cash for various reasons. The main reason is the best way, the most reliable way a company goes into bankruptcy or into administration is if they have too much debt and they can't service that debt. So I do prefer companies at this size 
to have at least net cash or very minimal debt. And that is a major red flag when it comes to eCargo. 650 million shares on issue and at a share price of 5.4 cents. This company has a market of roughly $33 million. So with net debt of $46 million, that means the enterprise value of this company is about $80 million. So I would like that to be a little bit lower just where this company is at in their life cycle. Negative equity. This is also a major red flag for me. I prefer companies to have positive equity and also growing equity. However, in saying that, equity did improve from last year to this year, uh, increasing from negative 38.3 million to negative 34.3 million. Can't really calculate return on equity because, well, you can calculate it, but it's going to be negative equity or negative because equity is negative and return on investor capital is negative 4.8. So two red flags there. I do prefer return on equity and return on investor capital to be greater than 10 and negative for this company. And of course, this company has no dividend, so there is no dividend yield. Now let's have a look at the valuation for eCargo. And this is where, for companies like eCargo, I don't really pay too much attention to valuation because even though eCargo is profitable and free cash flow, operating cash flow negative, there is a possibility that the profit of this company could quadruple or even more than quadruple over the next few years, which means if you do a valuation of this company right now, you could get it completely wrong because you could underestimate the growth. So if you do a lot of varied scenarios moving forward, you could keep going with these scenarios because there are a multitude, a plethora of future scenarios for eCargo. Now, I did a PE ratio. That's that's using or adjusting earnings to Australian dollars. And the PE ratio for this company is 43.6. That's actually meaningless to me. Now, that looks high, but who knows? Again, this company could double their profits in the next year, and that PE ratio of 43.6 would be low. Price to book ratio is negative because equity is negative. EV to operating cash flow, negative because operating cash flow is negative. So you're only relying on earnings. So any sort of earnings ratio, P ratio, that sort of thing. Also did a reverse TCF based off the earnings per share because again, this company has positive earnings. And to justify the current valuation, this company would have to increase the earnings per share at 14.8% per year, which is definitely possible for this company. However, who knows about the future of this company? The way I look at eCargo is they would have to prove to me they can grow their revenue, grow their earnings per share, become consistently profitable and consistently operating cash flow and free cash flow in the future. So at this point in time, we have almost have 10 years of history for eCargo. And this is the revenue and gross margin history of the company going back to 2014. And really, this company from 2014 through to 2020, this company had seen really good growth in revenue, increasing from 22.6 million to 218.45 million. And then obviously, this company was hit hard by COVID-19, particularly because it was focused in China and all the lockdowns there would have significantly affected their revenue. And it did. Revenue dropped from $218 million to $88 million in 2021, but has now started to rise up to $125.4 million. The other thing I like to focus on is gross margins, that sort of thing. And gross margins were increasing up until 2018. But since 2018, gross margins have fallen off a cliff. There probably is some reason behind that. And if I wanted to delve a little bit more deeply into eCargo, I'll try to find out why, e, why the gross margins have dropped uh, since 2018, and I'd like to see gross margins increasing from here. Now to the chart for eCargo. This is the weekly chart going back to when the company listed on the ASX back in November 2014. Not a good look looking chart. In fact, this is almost the opposite of the chart you want to see if you are a shareholder of the company. With the share price going from the top left to the bottom right. Now, a few things to mention here. There's been times, particularly in late 2015, in 2018, when there was a little bit of hype in this company. The first one was when, in late 2015, when the share price rose from about 10 cents to a high of 54 cents in one week. But that interest in this company died away or waned away fairly quickly. And the second time there was a little bit of excitement in this company was back in 2018, particularly the first month, first six months of that year, when the share price rallied from 4 cents to about 32 cents. And then that interest, waned away 
fairly quickly. Now, one thing you might see if you look at the last, uh, say, three and a half years, share price has been going sideways, consolidating over a three and a half year period. So that's a long consolidation period. The reason that's important is because all those shareholders who bought into high prices between 2015 and 2018 more than likely have now sold out because they've become bored. They were waiting for a rally in the share price, the rally to sell out, and the rally never happened. And eventually they just said, well, to hell with this. I'm just going to sell my e-cargo shares. And more than likely, the majority of those shareholders who bought at much higher prices in the bars have sold out. So they're no longer on the share registry. That is important because eventually when this company share price breaks out, if it breaks out, there's a potential um, scenario where it doesn't break out, uh, there'll be less resistance moving forward. So I have put eCargo onto my watch list because if this company's share price does break out and if it breaks out, the best way for it to break out is on positive financial news. And if it breaks out on positive financial news, this could be a buy because of the lack of resistance moving forward. So that's one thing I'm looking for, a nice breakout of the share price. And probably the share price I'd be looking at is above six cents. And I'll also be looking at the volume. So I want the breakout to be on high volume. So I put eCargo onto my watch list. I'll be looking at their financial reports moving forward. And who knows, there might be a breakout. One thing I probably won't do is lump this company with, in, with those Chinese companies that had listed on the ASX back in 2015, 2016. Virtually none of those companies are no longer listed on the ASX because funny things were happening with those companies. Uh, for instance, there was Sunbridge, had a massive amount of cash on hand and then just went bye-bye. Uh, I don't want to lump eCargo with those companies, even though it is focused on uh, operations and services in China and it reports in Hong Kong dollars. I don't think you can lump that company within that realm at this point in time. I think this company has proven itself, even though it hasn't been consistently profitable. And that's one thing I like to see, consistent profits, consistent operating cash flow and free cash flow. So who knows what's going to happen in the future with eCargo. And the one thing you can do when a company share price is consolidating is just wait. Be patient. Wait for that breakout. Wait for the company to prove that it can hit that very important inflection point that the market is wanting. And that important inflection point is profitability and operating cash flow and free cash flow positiveness on a consistent basis. And that is all I have for this look at eCargo's half-year report for financial year 23. Not necessarily a company I will be following too closely, but I can see the merits of putting this company on your watch list if you think this company has a future in e-commerce, particularly in Asia and China. And the one thing I will be looking for when it comes to eCargo is positive financial news and this if this company can deliver some positive financial news that could be the inflection point that could be the impetus and the catalyst for re-rating of this company's share price and valuation however there are some red flags particularly when it comes to debt and you can't ignore those red flags in my opinion if you have any thoughts about this company if you're a shareholder of eCargo I'd love to hear your thoughts of eCargo and why you're a shareholder of this company. So leave those in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who's qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.